All right, next four gamers back. It's time to start some fun stuff. It's initiative movement, and actually, it's going to be a little bit anticlimactic, um, as I'll explain uh, in a second. So, all the PRC units in the strategic surprise scenario start in the PRC, then the holding box, which functionally is the is the PRC because obviously it's a it's a surprise attack, right? Uh, so the PRC has some options. They have a few airborne troops. They can air mobile. They could airborne drop. Uh, they do have uh, these amps, which I will load. Um, I feel like I'm missing some guys. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I will load these amps up with some amphibious infantry. That does not. That is not moving. They can start that way, uh, and I will clear that so we can see what happens and then there's a couple of sags and a cv and bg here that needs to move so i think real quick we're just going to take the cvbg bn and we're going to move him out into the at c box for a couple of reasons it can provide a modifier out there for a lot of things um, and his planes will be able to fly so i'm gonna go ahead and move those to the ready box even though i'm not going to show you that you can see that later um but anytime an enable unit moves, two, two, two things happen. One, there's a major restriction. You can only ever enter one at C box. This counts as the one at C box entered, and so he stops moving. Technically, you could just keep moving up and down that, that C box, but there's no point in that. Uh, the second thing that happens is you always roll for detection uh, because that's the end of the move. So we go down here, enable unit detection again. Remember, the at C box modifier is a mi oops, minus one for the rock. Uh, they don't have AWACS advantage. There is a friendly naval unit in the inshore box, and that applies to the at sea box only, so that's now a minus two. They have no air superiority. There are no allied units in the at sea box, which is, a, which is a location, and then these other things don't matter. So it's going to be a minus two on this right here. Uh, you can't see the roll uh, right now. Uh, it's a seven, minus two is a five. No detection, so that carrier gets out there and nobody nobody's the wiser or at least they don't know enough to target it so now oop, i should do this we're going to try to recover our amp which is sitting out here now leaving a contested inshore box is not a big issue however if you leave a contested or a short inshore box that contains an enemy naval unit that is a contested sea movement and as you recall the rock presence of the rock sag on this inshore box representation on the operational map these are the same that's the same place it just gives you two places to show it depending on where you're focusing those uh, what your focus is right um so to make that contested roll c roll you're going to want your standard um standard play aid because it has those charts on there I need to find mine right quick. Bear with me just a second while I go pull that up. Uh, and you're looking for the contested sea movement chart. This is on the standard and advanced game table side because it applies to both. Um, and then again, a lot of die roll modifiers for this. Um, there is a CV. In the associated at sea box, there's air supremacy, so minus two. Inshore box is not controlled. Uh, ASW and submarine threat level affect allied moves only. There's no mines out here. It's not a beach defense hex. Island land area is uh, PRC controlled, so that doesn't matter. Um, technically, the allied player could... I think could fire off their SSM. They're not going to do that. They have very limited availability. So it's a minus two, which was a pretty good deal. A five becomes a three. So on that chart, that C movement is successful. He's just going back here uh, to pick pick up a guy. And that does complete his movement. He cannot then move again. Um, so I will switch back to the main map. Uh, so you can see that new imp here. I already put a, put a guy on there. Um, now what we're going to do, I mean, think even though there's mines here, we'll go ahead and, and stick with the plan, uh, even though the beach defenses are still up and there's a mine there. Um, these other ones have more beach defenses except for Sinchu, but I've already been pounding the air bases over here, and it's not really that close to a port. There's one here, but it's a little harder to take. You know, I'm hoping maybe to grab that one 
potentially. We'll see. Um, but because there are, there are mines here, well, actually, two things. First, I can't move directly. I take it back. I could move directly to these assault hexes, but I can't do an amphibious assault because I'm not starting from the inshore box. To do an amphibious assault, you must always start from the inshore box. Uh, that's just to represent some of the planning that has to happen there. So the first move these amps have to do is get into the shore box. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, inshore box. So they're all going to move here. I'm going to bring both sags along so they get some extra escorts. If you look back on your standard advanced game tables, because they're all moving at once, you get to apply all those modifiers. So between the SAGs, minus two, the CVN, CVs, minus three, air supremacies, minus four, I can't fail, so I'm not even going to roll. So that's a successful C move, and they're just going to stop there and hang out uh, until the next uh, movement phase, in which case they can now launch... Uh, as long as this rock sag is not there, they could launch uh, an amphibious invasion. So that's it. I'm not going to do air mobile and and uh, and or uh, airborne because I haven't even got troops here, and that just that just makes things crazy, um, and also allows the rock player to actually move. So he's not going to move until he by rule can't move until they actually land or attempt to land uh, on the island, uh, and that's more just. Doctrinally, they're not going to start moving around until they actually know, because this could be a feint. Who knows if they're going here? Maybe they are going to come over here and land on Sinchu. So you don't want your forces running around willy-nilly. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead really quick, go to the combat phase, because it's going to be short. There's no ground combat, obviously, but every combat segment, either side can initiate uh, naval combat. And naval combat... Let me pull up the right chart. Naval combat basically is a cruise missile strike between naval units. You use the combat value, so these sags are a 3, these amps are all a 1, uh, this rock sag is a 1. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do? We were hard to roll for detection, so I'm going to go top to bottom, and it's going to end up being a minus 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this amp is point detected. Next amp, 6 minus 2 is area detected. 4, you can tell I play a lot, right? Uh, 4 minus 2 is a 2. He's point detected. The sag is point detected. And the last sag has no detection at all. So, uh, this will be interesting. So, if you look at the naval combat rules, it, it's a very strict sequence. Um, undetected. So, it's all simultaneous. Uh, not simultaneous. Both sides get to fire. So, it's not one-sided affair. Either side can initiate combat. So, if... The PRC player, for whatever reason, said, you know what, I'm not going to do naval combat because I don't want to. The rock player could say, well, I do want to, and so I'm going to do that. But it's a very strict order. All undetected naval units simultaneously declare uh, any previously detected naval unit as their target, resolve the strike, and then are immediately marked as point detected. So in this case, the rock or the PRC has an undetected SAG who is going to declare this previously detected target or rock sag as their target, they get to fire first because it's uh, hidden, and then that is all resolved out of the out of the box. So if he's if this guy survives, then all detected units will simultaneously fire. This guy does not fire again, and then you conduct any retreats after that. Uh, so we're going to look at the advanced chart. Uh, it's going to be on the naval three. First, again, you get ADF against this incoming strike. Remember the. The uh, advanced air defense fire. Sea was always fires before naval surface combat, cruise missile, or airstrike. So if you recall, this guy had a AAA value of 1. He gets a minus 1 just for being a naval unit. So we're going to roll that. It's a good roll. Uh, it's a plus 2 to this incoming naval 3 strike. Uh, it's a non-US naval strike, so now it's a plus 3. It is a plus 1 just due to the fact... Oh, no, sorry. I talk. I, I take it back. Uh, this is naval service combat. That plus that additional plus one does not apply. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so it's plus two from the AAA result. It's a minus one for the point detection. So it ends up being a um, plus one on the naval three versus the naval unit, which is pretty darn good column. Unless you roll an eight, so that misses. This guy is now point detected. So now. 
he's fired nobody he can't fire again these guys will all fire here he gets to shoot back once uh, so in this case we're going to do that same thing here this three is going to fire and this is all simultaneous by the way and then we'll do the rock afterwards so triple a again that's going to completely miss so it'll be a minus one shot which becomes a six which actually is enough to put a strike one on him he's got a strike two so actually i'm going to clone that because it's all simultaneous he's now a strike two uh, and then these amps may as well fire although they're ones so he still has his triple a of one so this is the top amp firing a three with a minus one is a two which is going to be a plus one to his shot which is negated by the point so it's a flat on the naval one and a four on the naval one is another strike one which is enough to destroy this guy so we don't even have to roll for these guys they declared fire so he's going to be marked with point detect anyway now because this is all simultaneous the amp gets to shoot back simultaneously he is going to shoot in an amp and here's why if he gets a strike hit on it that any embarked unit also takes a step so now we have to go back to the naval delay and find out what a rock or a prc amp detection or uh triple a is so us japan russia sagar amp nope the prc any so his triple a is two um because he's not an other he will get a minus one on the triple a and then another minus one on top of that uh, the triple a two so or minus two on the two it becomes a two which becomes a plus two so his strike against this amp is a on the plus two column this guy is a naval one now he's point detected though so it's a plus one net three on the naval one is a strike one so this amp takes a strike one this embarked unit is reduced and this guy is simply eliminated and they do not come back so that's going to be five vp accruing to the PRC side and the inshore box are now clear, which means in the next segment we can do an amphibious landing and we will do that next time. I'm going to go ahead and advance this to elite reaction. There's no elite reaction because nobody's landed. Exploit move and we will tackle exploit move next time.